In this case, we have 4 sine squared of 2x equals 3. And what we're going to do is we're going to find all the solutions as well as find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. Now again, just like we've done before, guys, all the algebra in this class is not above algebra 1. right? We are not going above algebra 1. So if you get stuck with like, man, what do I do here? Forget there's trig involved and just replace it with an x. Say 4x squared equals 3. Just say, all right, I'm just going to solve from here. Well, in algebra 1, what do we do? We just divide by 4. Now, and then we take x squared equals 3 fourths. Take the square root. Remember, using the property of radicals, we can break that up into plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. All right, you could take the square root of the numerator and denominator. You can break it up. And then also remember, if we talked about last class, we had the plus or minus. And guess what? Don't feel bad. Every single class after you guys did not do the plus or minus. Literally, every single class I gave that problem to the, the plus or minus got it wrong. So please make sure you guys are doing that, OK? Because it might be on your quiz. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Um, all right, so that's basically what we did. Now, what are we going to do with this 2x? Because you know, that's what we were kind of finishing off at the end. Well, I think the best thing that you guys can do from here is just use a different variable for the time being. Um, you could say 2x is. Let's give it u. You could give it theta. You could beta, alpha, v, w, y, whatever you want to call it. But let's just let this expression 2x equal u so we can solve this without kind of being distracted. OK, so I'm going to do my same algebraic process. And basically, I am going to let x equal, well, when I did this, I let x equal sine of x, correct? So can I basically now just kind of go from here and say sine of u is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now again, u just representing any angle, right? I mean, you can use theta if you want to, if you feel more comfortable with it. But again, going back to our unit circle, when, for what angles is the sine square root of 3 over 2? Plus or minus. So we think square root of 3 over 2, that's going to be? pi over 3, right? Good catch. So, but yeah, you're gonna, I mean, you're going to mix them up all the time, right? I just did it. So yeah, it's sine is pi over 3. And then it's going to be all of them, though. Pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, um, 4 pi over 3, and uh, 5 pi over 3. Yes? OK. Now, is there any, do you guys see any kind of like symmetry or equidistance between e any of these? Like. This distance between these two is not the same, though, from here to here. Right? So can we kind of group these angles together? Yeah? yeah? How would we? Pi maybe? 3 plus pi and then 2 pi over 3 plus pi. Right, so we could say pi over 3, which is the first one. And then you could see that is pi away from the next angle. And then we could also say that um, let u equals 2 pi over 3. And then we could say plus pi n over here. Right? OK, so I only used u just so I could do this algebra. And again, you don't need to do this. If you just want to solve it as it is, do that. I'm just showing you guys this so you don't, be confu don't get confused when you are trying to do this and you get stuck. I'm like, just go back to x's. right? Go back to x's and y's. Don't let the trig um, confuse you. But you don't need to do this. You could solve it in this way. Again, the only reason why I'm using the u is just so you're not writing so much. Um, all the time, and you're getting confused with that 2x. But if you want to continue using the 2x all the way through, then fine. Continue using the 2x all the way through. Because we don't do anything with the 2x until the very, very end. We're not using that as an inverse operation. Because again, notice that 2x, guys, is inside the function, right? You can't undo something inside the function until you've gotten rid of the function. And we don't get rid of this function until we solve, right, from this point. u is still inside. But once we evaluate it now, now we don't have the function. Now we can use our inverse operations. Sorry, say that. <laughs> oh, OK. So when we solve this, we get x equals 2 pi over 6 plus pi half 7. OK, so this is all solutions. Now, what if I said find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi? 
And if you guys remember last class period, I think the easiest thing to go do from here is just pick values of n. So let's do between 0 and 2 pi. All right, and let's do the solution set. Let's do an n equals 0. So an n equals 0. So what I'm doing is I, like this represents all the solutions. Pi over 6 plus pi halves n. 2 pi over 6 plus pi halves n, which is really pi over 3. Um, now let's just pick different values of n. Let's start with 0. We don't want to pick negative. Because once you guys agree, negative would give us two negative values, and we need to find answers or angles between 0 and 2 pi. So if I plug in 0, I get pi over 6. Here, I would get 2 pi over 6, which is simplified to pi over 3. Now let's put n as 1. Are you guys OK with me rewriting pi halves as 3 pi over 6? So they have common denominators. Is that OK to do the math in our head like that? OK, so if n is 1, this is really pi or 3 pi over 6 plus 4 pi over 6, or 1 pi over 6, which is just going to be 4 pi over 6, which can be simplified down to 2 thirds. Over here, when n is, n is 1, we would have, again, a 3 pi over 6 plus a 2 pi over 6, which would be a 5 pi over 6. All right, let's do an n equals 2. So then that's technically pi, which is the same thing as 6 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 is 7 pi over 6. When n is 2, you would get pi, which is really 6 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6 plus 2 pi over 6 is 8 pi over 6, which would be 4 pi over 3. All right, and again, do we still have more room between 0 and 2 pi? Right, because what's, what's the final result of 2 pi? What's the final one of 2 pi? In terms of 6, in terms of denominator 6, 12 pi over 6, right? So we still got a while to go. Um, so let's do n. So I did, that was n equals 0. This was n equals 1. Here's n equals 2. Let's do n equals 3. n equals 3, I would have a 3 pi over 2, which in terms of 6 would be a 9 pi over 6. Yes, I'm doing some of the fractions in my head for you guys. So 9 pi over 6 plus pi over 6 would be 10 pi over 6. Actually, stop. Can we look at some patterns? Can we maybe see if there's some patterns going on here? 9 pi over 6, that'd be 10 pi over 6, 4 pi over 3. Well, what are we adding? We're just adding pi halves every time, right? Which is the same thing as? 3 pi over 6. So actually, you know what I'm going to do? Hold on a second. Sorry about that. Um, let's write this as pi over 6. And this was um, 2 pi over 6 times 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. Do you guys remember when I was telling you um, to not simplify until the very, very end? Because sometimes it can make life harder when you actually have things simplified. Um, this would be a good case of that. So as you guys can see, like we're having one, two, we're skipping. Like you guys can see, like there's a kind of a pattern, right? Let's go to one, two, skip three, four, five, skip six, seven, eight. And then obviously, you're not going to have 9 pi over 6, but we'll have 10 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now, the next one is going to be 12 pi over 6, which would be 2 pi, which we know is not going to be equivalent anyways. And then we can now go ahead and simplify these answers. 10 pi over 6 is going to be, ah, divided by that, it's 5 pi over 3. And this is 11 pi. And again, I'm not really just following the pattern. What I'm following is the adding of pi halves, because you're always adding pi halves to each one. But again, this is a little bit more of an advanced one, and we are past the time limit, so I am going to end it there. The main idea that I need you guys just to